I think this is the most underrated tool for making any camera feel more expensive. The best part is, the cheaper your camera, the more important it is, and it's only $150. I've wanted to make this video for a very long time because when it comes to filmmaking, you normally spend thousands and thousands of dollars to make small improvements. So I feel that this tool is massively underrated as it's relatively cheap compared to other filmmaking equipment and the result it provides for cheaper cameras is massive. What it can do is it can make your video feel like film, cinematic or higher budget, however you want to describe it. This is something that people just associate the look of with more expensive looking videos. Without wasting any more time, let me show you what I'm talking about. This is a mist filter. Now, quick disclaimer before I go any further. I reached out to Nisa and asked if we could have some of their mist filters for the making of this video. No money changed hands and everything you're about to hear is all my own thoughts, positive and negative, and they don't get to see the video before it goes out. So let me show you what this thing can do. It reduces highlights and rolls them off in a more soft character and also reduces the overall contrast of your image. This is especially important when it comes to people's skin tones and really bright areas or backlighting. When it comes to mist filters, you can get them in a white variant and a black variant. Now my advice would be to go for the black mist filter as it's a more subtle, delicate version of the white mist filter with none of the real negatives. Now let's talk about strengths. Mist filters come in a 1 8, 1 4, half and full. It can be super tempting to go for a super strong like half or full stop mist filter and that can be great for if your story requires it or you want a dreamy effect but my advice is to fight the temptation because you can lose too much contrast and sharpness it wants to be something that just feels like it belongs with the footage and not something you've added on top of it so here we have some comparisons. On the left, we've got no mist. Middle, we've got one eighth. And right, we've got one fourth. As you can see, really like what it's doing here, just reducing the contrast and creating a nice, pleasant, softer image. Here's an example of somewhere where I would not use a mist filter. I don't know how this is coming across on YouTube, but the whole point of this shot would be to crush the blacks and create contrast. If we crop in here, yeah, you can really see that the cleaner blacks are on the bottom image and we're just creating noise and it's just not needed. I really love what it's doing in this shot. If you look at the 1 4th mist on top, the way the glow, just the way it's softening off the light as it hits the skin tones, yeah, this is definitely somewhere where I would use a mist filter as a prime example. Here's another shot where I love what it's doing. Again, I would probably lean for the 1 4th mist on this shot. It looks great. We have an Aperture P300C here, just dimmed right down. But as you see, as Will spins it and it just lands on his skin tones, it's just much pleasant, a less harsh image. And yeah, just overall more filmic and organic for me. So let's talk about some negatives I've found over using a mist filter for the last 10 years. Number one, when screwing two filters together, like an ND filter and a mist filter, sometimes they can get stuck. There's nothing more embarrassing than if you're holding up a set because you have two filters stuck together, you can't get your ND filter off, but you're wanting to use a mist filter. Now, luckily enough, Nisa look like they've solved this problem, but to be honest, someone should have solved this a long time ago. Negative number two. There are definitely times you should not use a mist filter. Now, one time we were shooting in a busy London street and there was a traffic light just off the side of the frame. Now, every time the traffic light changed color from red to amber to green, it would cast that corresponding color across the whole frame. Now, as soon as we removed the filter, the problem seemed to go, so it was fine. But it's good to just keep an eye on it and make sure that you're not getting any weird contrast or color cast. So Nissi sent me out a full kit called the Swift System. Now, this is something I never used before that has NDs and mist filters together and involves stacking them on top of each other. This would be the perfect opportunity to take out and do some tests with the Ursa Mini G2's internal NDs and the Nisi NDs. So let's go do that. Just thought I would jump in here from the edit as I just noticed something. Nissi sent me out a full kit with NDs and mists together, what's stacked on top of each other. It's a really cool system and does really help the issue with the filters sticking together. But when I was comparing the ND filters to the built-in ones on the Black Magic, I did notice that when going beyond six stops of ND, if you can see on the top image on screen now, there is a strong magenta tint. So that's just something I would watch out for. It's a simple fix, just white balance your camera after you've applied the ND, as you should be doing anyway, because that's good practice. But yeah, I just thought I'd notice, note that in and say that you've got to be careful for the IR pollution that happens when applying a lot of ND. 
this is definitely not a deal break for me and I'm definitely going to be using the Nissi ND system moving forward as it's super convenient and solves a lot of issues I've had over the years. I love the way the filters stack and I love the way you can push on and off the mist filters and it's all combined into one. And it works especially great with if your camera doesn't have built-in NDs like your Sony's, Canon's, Panasonic's. So yeah, it's a really great option and I, I still recommend it. So mist filters are more important than ever for making skin look softer. There's even stories of major actors in Hollywood having wrote in their contracts that every shot or close-up on their face must have a mist filter on the lens. My number one tip when it comes to buying a mist filter for yourself is always buy the biggest mist filter you can buy. One of the mistakes we did a long time ago is we bought a mist filter the same size as our lens at the time, what was a photography lens. Since then we have upgraded the lens many times, up in cinema lenses and the mist filter just doesn't fit anymore. If we'd have bought the 82mm or 95mm mist filter in the first place, we could have used adapter rings to downsize and fit it on the smaller lens and as our lenses got bigger we could have kept the same filter throughout all the years. So make sure you're getting the biggest filter you can possibly get your hands on. So if you're not already using a mist filter, I highly recommend getting your hands on one as the price versus impact is almost unheard of in the film industry. We don't get paid to make these videos so I'm dropping an affiliate link down below. Please click that to support the channel before making any purchases. And if you've ever wondered what's more important, your camera or your lens, click here.